What's up, everybody? We're back at it again with another episode of Ascending Artists with Mass Mortal. How's everybody doing today? We got Presence, who's gained a lot of exposure from YouTube and TikTok. One of the artists that really, really, if you think about his lyrics, it hits deep. Like, it hits deep. But no, yeah, one of my favorite songs by him is Dear Depression. Uh, if you haven't heard it, I'm going to link it in the bio down below. He also had a merch drop. Some of the smoothest merch that I've seen in a while. So really check that out. Without further ado, though, we're going to get right into this episode. If you guys are new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Be part of the Noti gang. You guys already know the vibes. Episode 13 already, Ascending Artist with Mass Mortal. We got Presence. How you doing today, my guy? Uh, I'm glad to be here, man. I'm glad to be here. Hell Talking yeah. You. yeah in, I was the say, I'm, I'm, yeah. in the flesh. Yes, I'm glad yeah. I was able to... Uh, crazy tiktok world bump into each other next thing you know end up talking a little got you on the show so really happy about that man yeah no absolutely thank you for having me i'm, I'm glad that uh you know i reached out and you responded you know <laughs> hell yeah uh so how did you get started in the music industry uh i mean my sense into you know the music industry uh was uh kind of an accident like I, it, it was, I'm, I'm sure you've talked to people on here that have said like, oh, it's been my dream since I was a child. Like I was going to be a musician and stuff. Uh, but that just really wasn't the case for me. I, I just enjoyed writing. And so obviously with writing that comes poems and then poems sometimes turn into songs and whatnot. And uh, so I was like writing lyrics, but I didn't really understand what I was doing. I was in like middle school. And then by the time I got to high school, I had quit playing basketball, which was pretty much my main, you know, side focus aside from, you know, school yeah. uh, at that time. And then, you know, I wasn't allowed to have any social media or anything, uh, but I decided to upload a video to YouTube, you know, without anybody knowing uh, of me, of some lyrics that I had written over. I'm sure, I don't know if you're familiar with like the 10 toes challenge from like four years ago. Yep, uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> that was, that was the big thing at the time. Yep. And uh, so I had recorded this video of, you know, me, it was like me on rapping on sped. I was like 14 years old. I go back and cringe at it now, uh, but it definitely was like the start of something uh, really cool that, that I really couldn't have anticipated at the time. Uh, so I posted that and it got like, you know, 10,000 views in like the first month, you know, which for me, 14 years old, my first video is like, oh my gosh, this is, this is life changing. I need That's to you, run. Yeah. With, you know, yeah. Um, and so I was just uploading stuff though, just pretty much for the sake of uploading it and for, you know, whoever saw it, you know, uh, but it wasn't something still that I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to turn this into a career. I still had the plans to, you know, go to college, pursue uh, you know, psychology and, uh, you know, take that route. But then it was about nine months after I had started my YouTube channel. This was all on YouTube. Yeah. Um, and I had posted a remix of Jocelyn Flores by X. Uh, and then, and I did that I re really close to the release date of the song and the album. I did it like I think like 12 hours after it came out, I found an instrumental, I wrote something and then I recorded it, uploaded it in the morning. Smart. And so what happened was everyone was searching for that song. Uh, and, you know, my remix was coming up right there with it or was getting recommended right after they listened to the song. And, uh, you know, that ended up getting like a million views in like two weeks. And, Crazy. Um, and that, that was really the beginning of me starting to take it more serious because I think from that point, it was like, okay, there's an expectation of me. Uh, and so I just kind of stepped into those shoes. It's like, people expect me to be an artist now. And so that, I guess, you know, that's what I am. I, I, the way the thing I kind of compare it to is how, um, I, I don't know necessarily the term for it, but when people expect people who wear glasses to be smarter because of kind of that stereotype, but they actually usually do end up becoming smarter because that's just the expectation of them. Yeah. Um, and that kind of happened to me even in schooling when I was as far back as second grade, uh, I wasn't supposed to be in like the gifted student section or whatever. But then one of my friends was like, Oh yeah, John's supposed to be with us or whatever, you know? Uh, and the teacher was like, okay. And so I went over, but then that became the expectation. And from that point forward, I became like a straight A student. You know, I think it's just uh, something, things like that. I'm just, 
I just stepped stepped into the rules. So uh, yeah, that was kind of how my music journey began, and then I've just been running with it ever since. I was say yeah, that's that's kind of just a coincidence. Then basically, that's I, that's like the first time I've heard that. So that's actually pretty sweet. So yeah, no, I mean it's definitely something I'm super grateful for, though. Like even though it wasn't the plan for me, I feel like you know if they're is a higher power you know that was definitely the plan they had for me you know 100 100 percent with that and i see like if you look your tiktok page is doing pretty well too and i try to tell as many independent artists there are out there i'm like yo that's the best way to just sample market show mm-hmm. who you are so i mean and you're doing a really good job with that as well yeah no i appreciate that big shout out to uh to my friend mun for putting me onto the tiktok wave uh, I don't know if you've heard any of his music, but he's, he's a great artist. And he's like, you need to get on TikTok, man. Uh, start uploading your stuff. And, uh, you know, lo and behold, it actually worked out. So I'm grateful for grateful with it, for that as a platform. And for people like you who are sharing music like mine and of, of a lot of other smaller artists and whatnot uh, that wouldn't necessarily usually get that kind of exposure. Hell yeah. So, and you know, it, like, I, I feel like almost the same way as you said, you know, it just kind of your music, if you were like forced, not forced in a role, but the role just kind of presented itself to you. You know, I'm kind of in the same boat almost where it's like the role kind of presented itself to me. So now it's like, all right, how can I kind of give back to others with this role that I have? So, but hell yeah. Yeah. That's a really cool way to approach it. That then, you know, I'm sure you didn't expect to, you know, I mean, to be the the, the music guy uh, <laughs> and, and now you are. Hell yeah. yeah. And I'm, I'm blessed for it. But uh, who are some of your biggest music inspirations? Would you oh, say? man. <laughs> um, I will say someone that's pretty prevalent that I obviously get the comparison to a lot, but it makes sense because I listened to a lot of his music in middle school, which was sort of like bef- where before I started uh, actually up- uploading my own music and stuff is like NF definitely kind of shaped the, the direction that I ended up taking with my music. Okay. Um, definitely X, of course. Um, but then nowadays, I really listen to I, li- I love artists like Bon Iver, Phoebe Bridgers, um, and then even someone like like Aries, who I know you're familiar with, like yeah. just just stuff that is like, I listen to it and it's either, I either go like, wow, this is really cool, you know, or something that I listen to and I, it just makes me feel something. Uh, you know, I think those are the two, two coolest reactions besides obviously when you listen to music and there's the nostalgia aspect of like, wow, this brings me back to a place, but you can't necessarily do that with something that you're listening to for the first time. 100%. Uh, so I would say um, it's kind of sporadic all over the place. I like to listen to whatever. And I really like to, um, if I listen to something and I think it's cool, kind of ponder on how I could implement uh, that style or something in, uh, like that into my music. So um yeah wide variety though i like that all right all right who'd your uh dream collab be if you had to pick like one artist that'd be like yo i'd love to hop on a track with you who would that be uh i mean i just said both both of these artists but i i think uh <laughs> phoebe bridgers for sure uh would be would be amazing i love her uh and then uh justin vernon of boney bear that would be uh you know maybe maybe far-fetched but you know that that would be you know the dream collab. it'd be sweet yeah it'd be yeah. it'd be awesome to have that for sure yeah so all right sweet uh, anything planned like big for 2021 you got any is it mostly going to be just singles kind of releasing out here or anything huge yeah yeah i mean just releasing a lot of singles uh something cool that i'm sort of working on with my producer right now is uh getting some of my older car videos from youtube which uh you know some a lot of my audience will probably be familiar with because that was what i started doing on youtube initially was like remixes or just uh songs that i would write and perform in the backseat you know of my dad's car uh starting to actually get some of those songs like turned into like real songs that they could have and uh it's it's pretty far out now some of these videos came out you know two three even you know four years ago at this point uh but i think for some people that's going to add an aspect of like wow i listened to this when i was you know 16 years old and now i'm 20 or 12 years old and now i'm 16 you know it's a completely different part of your life but to have something that uh is is still new but does kind of bring that nostalgic factor uh I think that'll be pretty cool. I think a lot of uh, 
of my audience will be excited for that. Uh, and then a lot of new stuff, of course, you know, trying a lot of new styles, working on uh, different, uh, different folk stuff, different rap stuff, singing, you know, whatever, whatever I'm feeling at, at the moment. Got you. Hell yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, five, if you had to pick five songs to make like the playlist of your life or like more so five songs that inspire you the most, what would those be? I know it's kind of like a tall task because there's so many, so there's like so much good music out there, but if you could narrow it down to five. Ah, <laughs> uh, man. Okay. Five songs out of probably thousands that I've listened to in my life. <laughs> um, okay. I'll go with like the songs I think sort of mean the most to me. Okay. Uh, so one of those would definitely be Sign of the Times by Harry Styles. Um, I think that song just holds a really special place in my heart because it always reminds me of my grandpa and he was like okay. my best friend, uh, you know, before he passed away, of course. And, uh, you know, I, I, I just remember like hearing that song for the first time. I was like, oh my gosh, this is phenomenal. I need to show pop. And then I remember showing it to him and he had a, uh, he put up his arm and he showed like that. It, he was like, look, my hairs are sticking up, you know, yeah. That's response. awesome. Uh, and so, uh, I think it's just a phenomenal song and it takes me back to that, to a special place. Uh, and so I would say sign of the times by Harry Styles for sure is one of the five, um, funeral by Phoebe Bridgers is probably one of the most special songs to me as well. You know, I guess another song that kind of deals with death. Um, but, yeah. um, but I, I think the way that it comes back around as well, uh, you know, where, she starts off the song singing like, I'm singing at a funeral tomorrow for a kid a year older than me. And then she says she was talking to his dad. It makes her so sad. But then she keeps like singing and singing and singing about all of these other things and her problems and whatnot and how she got blacked out the night before. And then she woke up and felt like a mess. But then she's like, but then I remembered someone's kid is dead. Uh, and it's like I, I, that the first time I heard it just hit me like a rock because it, it, it oh, puts yeah. so much perspective into into what so many of my problems I feel like are you know I I, I stress I, you know I I've had anxiety since I was you know a kid uh, and so I tend to overthink most things in life uh, yeah. and uh, you know I, I worry about the littlest things and then I remember like oh my gosh like I'm alive I have a roof over my head right now I have food like that's really what matters I have family uh you know and you know there's someone out there whose kid probably just died you know and exactly. uh you know it uh and then, but then and then it kind of takes me on this tangent of like wow I'm gonna die one day my kids are gonna die one day. and they you know they, this the uh, whole thing around, yeah. yeah but I definitely love that song uh, I would say the third would probably be Grow As We Go by Ben Platt, uh, love song. I, I think that song has really helped me through, um, through many relationships in my life, but really like my current, uh, like relationships with just individuals, but you know, I've been in a, in a relationship for like about a couple of years now. And uh, okay. that song, you know, just Grow As We Go, that's kind of been the motto of just like, like as as we go you know we're going to grow we're probably going to change you know but it's like we're going to grow together uh and so that song has kind of been uh, the motto for um any kind of relationship that with as a friendship or you know more intimate uh within the last like two years yeah um, and then uh i would say a fourth more recent um really actually i think only like a month ago the song came out but i feel like you just already made so that big of just like a, a impact on me because i feel like at this point i listen to when i listen to new songs it's hard to get me to like cry i think because i work i've obviously i've listened to so much music but i write so much sad music as well yeah uh, and so a lot of times i'm like thinking about the process of creating the song and whatnot um, but a song that actually got me to cry last month and that has just been like the defining song for me since, since, uh, has been All Eyes on Me by Bo Burnham. I don't know if you watched the Inside special by him. 
Um, but that I, did, I do not. Yeah, I did not. I got to watch that for sure. Yeah, is is fantastic. But I think the whole thing building up to to this song, um, and just kind of seeing him in isolation, creating something for the pleasure of others, but kind of driving himself crazy in the process is something that I could really relate to. Uh, and then it, it gets to this this big, really emotional moment uh, that I was just sitting right there, like standing up. You know, I got up from the couch just because I was like oh, in awe and started crying. Um, so I would say that's probably the uh, fourth one. Okay. And fifth, I don't know. That that's when it gets so hard because it's like, oh my gosh, the last one. You only got one um, left. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I feel like maybe. I would say Broad Shoulders by Taylor Bennett and uh, Chance the Rapper. Really, really loved. Uh, it's a solid song. Uh, Chance the Rapper um, on that song and just in general. Uh, and uh, I think it reminds me a little bit of my relationship with my older brother, who's someone that I'm super grateful for. Uh, and I think just when I listen to it again, it just transports me to, to other times that I've listened to it. Uh, while still kind of creating something new in the moment. I try not to listen to the song too much because of that, uh, because I feel like when I do listen to it, it's, it's always something special and I don't want to oversaturate that, uh, but but that would be another one. And then obviously there's so many other songs, let's see, Plans by Oh Wonder, there's probably uh, Naeem by Bon Iver, uh, uh, the whole 17 album by X, uh, the song called Ready by Triple E. Yeah, so, so many songs, man, but the, yeah, those are my five. That's the tough thing. Whenever I ask that question, I mean, like the you, all, all, all the people I talk to are artists, basically. And that's the thing is like, there's so much music that you can literally just go off of, like that inspires you or just that means so much as that much of a meaning to you. So yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, so big, big kind of like a deeper question for you. What do you want your fans to kind of get out of your music when they're listening to it? So after they're done, just like the afterthought for the fans. Yeah. So Obviously, I want people to listen to it. I, I don't know. See, for me, it, it used to be that I wanted people to uh, come out of it and feel something. That that was the thing. I, I wanted people to feel something. Or I yeah. wanted to, you know, obviously, I deal with the topics of, like, mental health a lot. And so it's like I wanted to, to help people dealing with similar things as me and whatnot. But I'm at a point now where I'm starting to realize that art is pretty subjective, and so True. I, I sort of want people to draw their own conclusions based on my experiences, because what I, what I realized with writing um, is that if I just write about life, like my own life in general, I'll, I'll never run out of things to write about because there's always something new going on, you know? Yeah. And so I more so have realized, okay, I could make songs for me and then put them out. And, you know, the chances are someone else is going to relate with it or someone else is going to interpret it in one way or another. And so I sort of just want to tell whatever story it is that that I'm feeling and then, you know, have, have someone think about it. I, I think, I think as, as any type of artist, though, like the, the ideal situation that you're thinking about is just a thoughtful person, like a you know that uh, just takes time to listen to your song and actually just goes, "Wow, like that was cool," or "I appreciated that," or um, you know, no, some someone that that actually is is gonna think, you know, may, maybe beyond the surface level of like, "Oh, that sounded that was a nice song," you know. Um, and so I, I guess I just want to create stuff that, that makes people think, uh, you know. Yeah, and I, I get that. I mean, you, you can kind of tell from the music that you make or from what I've listened to. Um, you, you, you think a little bit more when you're actually listening to your music. So don't get me wrong. There's a lot of other artists out there that more so, you know, for the vibe or for the pop or something more on the trendy side. But you, you can kind of tell that your music dives a little bit on the deeper side towards whatever the topic may be for that time. So, yeah, for that yeah. Song, but so. but I would like to say too, I don't think there's anything wrong with that stuff either. I know there's like a lot oh, of no. people, yeah, who are like, like, oh, like I only listen to real music or this and that or <laughs> this is that, you know. And it's like, like, okay, calm down, you know. Like, there's a time and place for everything, you know. It's yeah, just yeah. what I like to make, uh, but I'll still listen to to all of that stuff as well. 
Oh yeah. No, I to each their own when it comes to music. That's the beautiful, beautiful thing about music is there's so many different routes and uh, areas and artists you can go to. So, but that's, that's what I love about music. So yeah. Anything else you want to say by chance? Uh, any, you got, I saw that uh, sweatshirt you're wearing. I saw that and I was like, yeah, oh, it's yeah. pretty cold if that's your merch. So that's yeah, pretty it cool. is, it is, it is actually. Um, yeah. Thanks for pointing that out. Uh, I, I just forgot I was wearing it. It's comfortable. <laughs> Yeah, I, um, I saw that and I was like, yeah, it's pretty nice. So you have a whole merch line then with those and I'll have to plug yeah. that in the bio down below for you guys. Yeah. So this actually hasn't dropped yet, but maybe, oh. it will, maybe it will drop by the time that, when is this coming out? I don't even know. Um, Saturday, next Saturday coming up, I believe, which. Okay. Be, then then maybe it'll be out by then. Um, but uh, yeah, just got <laughs> these and then uh, just give it some time. Uh, shirts as well just uh pretty much all in relation to uh, the newest song dear depression um which thank thank you for actually you know giving a lot of help to as well oh yeah man. Um, yeah so yeah this is this is the merch uh and yeah anything else i would say um you know thank you to you for having me on here appreciate uh, you coming um, on yeah when did you start like collecting all of your shoes and jerseys and whatnot? Ah, when you did know, I start? I flipped the interview onto you. Flipped the interview onto me. Yeah. Honestly, the jerseys, shoes, all that started back in high school. So I mean, I've I've been collecting probably now for like four, four or five years now. But like the shoes, yeah. more got more so serious into it the last like two years. So okay. But, yeah, it, it, nice. it, it, it becomes a, a habit and probably not the greatest of habits either in the world so yeah no I mean I I have my fair share of of shoes as well but mostly because my dad my dad works uh you know for Foot Locker at, at Foot Locker um yeah. and so I you know and he, he has for my entire life and so uh you know it's always been you know just around shoe culture and whatnot so that that's obviously something that that i noticed immediately and me just being into sports as well uh you got the jaw jersey back there and uh you know your fair share of ones back there and everything so oh, yeah. yeah yeah real nice having you on man i appreciate yeah. it oh yeah no thank you man thank you again for watching ascending artists with mass mortal make sure to hit the subscribe button be part of the noti gang you guys know the vibes peace